Hello everyone, welcome back to Military TV Channel. Today I'm going to tell you our curiosity about how the US saved the Red Army in World War II. We all know abstractly that World War II was one of the most destructive conflicts in human history. It began when Nazi Germany unleashed ferocious attacks across Europe, but it spread to the Soviet Union, China, Japan, and the United States. The war dragged on for six bloody years until all allies defeated Nazi Germany and Japan in 1945. But some of the war's most savage fighting occurred on the Eastern Front. The fighting on the Eastern Front was terrible and incessant, brutal beyond belief. The two principal belligerent powers were Germany and the Soviet Union, along with their respective allies. Both sides fought with demonic fury, the Germans to crush the hated Slavs and the Soviets to defend the sacred soil of Mother Russia. Though never engaged in military action in the Eastern Front, the United States and the United Kingdom allies both provided substantial material aid in the form of the Lend-Lease to the Soviet Union. All large quantities of various military equipment that supplied to the USSR by the Western Allies, such as motor vehicles and fighter planes, and most of all helped the Soviets survive while the most difficult periods of the war with Germany. In a November 1941 letter to Roosevelt, Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin wrote, Your decision, Mr. President, to give the Soviet Union an interest-free credit of $1 billion in the form of material supplies and raw materials has been accepted by the Soviet government with heartfelt gratitude as urgent aid to the Soviet Union in its enormous and difficult fight against the common enemy, bloodthirsty Hitlerism. At a dinner toast with Allied leaders during the Tehran Conference in December 1943, Stalin added, The United States is a country of machines. Without the use of those machines through Lend-Lease, we would lose this war. Nikita Khrushchev, who led the Soviet Union from 1953 to 1964, agreed with Stalin's assessment. In his memoirs, Khrushchev described how Stalin stressed the value of Lend-Lease aid. He stated bluntly that if the United States had not helped us, he would not have won the war. Here are the military equipment supplied by allies to Red Army. Number 1. Studebaker US-6 Truck Had it not been for the American Studebakers, we wouldn't have been able to transport our artillery. Yes, they were in general largely carrying out our frontline transport operations, Marshal George Zhukov once observed in an informal conversation. The 150,000 trucks delivered to the Soviet Union under the Lend-Lease program became the real workhorses of the Red Army. Without the USSR having lost a huge number of trucks during the early period of the war, and the manufacture of new trucks running at too slow a pace, the Studebakers could not have come at a more important time. They were used as towing vehicles, trucks, and platforms for the famous Katusha rocket launchers. Number 2. M4A2 Sherman Tank In 1944, Red Army received Sherman tanks. It was the best American tank in service during the war. It had a good engine, good armor, and good armaments. Armed with a 75mm cannon and a Browning anti-aircraft machine gun, a rarity on Soviet tanks, the fast and maneuverable Shermans also had their drawbacks. The tank's height made it an excellent target on the battlefield, and its armor was more vulnerable than that of its Soviet counterparts. More than 4,000 M4A2 tanks arrived in the Soviet Union and went into service in the Red Army. And while American troops weren't the first to reach the capital of the Third Reich, their tanks did. The Soviet Second Guard's tank army alone lost 209 Shermans in the fight for Berlin. Number 3. Hawker Hurricane Fighter Plane The Hurricanes first appeared in the Soviet Union in the early months of the war when they were needed most. Due to the heavy losses, the Soviet Air Force needed to be replenished urgently. The British fighter plane was particularly useful providing cover for the Allies' Arctic convoys as well as during the defense of Moscow. More than 3,000 humpbacks, as the Hurricanes were nicknamed in the USSR, arrived in the country but they didn't arouse much enthusiasm among Soviet pilots. 
By the end of 1941, the planes were already considerably inferior in their combat features compared to the latest versions of their main rival, the Messerschmitt Bf 109. Number 4. Willys Jeep The command personnel of the Red Army immediately fell in love with the American Willys Army vehicle. Small but powerful and maneuverable, it traveled easily and quickly cross-country. The absence of doors allowed the driver and passenger to abandon the vehicle quickly in case of danger. At the same time, the deep placement of the seats prevented those inside from falling out during movement. Willys didn't just carry generals, they were also used as artillery towing vehicles for 45mm anti-tank and 76mm divisional guns. About 52,000 were sent to the Soviet Union. The Willys Jeeps are pretty much the last survivors of the Lindlease military equipment program, still taking part in annual victory parades in Russian cities. Number 5. Bell P-39 – Era Cobra Fighter Plane This American fighter was the favorite of many Soviet aces, including Alexander Pokryshkin and Grigory Rekolov. Each had 65 kills. It had amazing survivability. Even riddled with bullets, it could carry on fighting. The Allies were happy to send Era Cobras to the Soviet Union. The P-39 was of little use in the high-altitude air battles common in Western theaters of war. On the Eastern Front, Soviet and German pilots fought mainly at medium and low altitude, and here these aircraft always performed excellently. In the end, during the entire duration of the war, the USSR received 4,952 Era Cobras, which means that more Era Cobras were supplied to the Soviet Union under Lend-Lease than any other type of aircraft. Number 6. Ford GPA Amphibious Vehicle These amphibious vehicles were not very popular with American soldiers. They sat low in the water, causing waves to swamp the hull even during light choppiness at sea. On the other hand, the Red Army, which mainly had to ford rivers, was quite pleased with the GPAs. Unlike motorboats, the GPAs didn't require complicated operations when being transported, launched, or landed. In April 1944, 11 separate motorized special operations battalions were formed using Ford GPAs to cross rivers and reach the enemy-occupied side, as well as to clear the beachheads of mines and hold areas until friendly troops arrived. In total, the Soviet Union received about 3,000 of these vehicles from the Allies. The Red Army gave them the designation Ford 4. Besides, Americans also sent more than 1.5 million blankets, 15 million pairs of army boots, 107,000 tons of cotton, 2.7 million tons of petroleum products to fuel airplanes, trucks, and tanks, 4.5 million tons of food guns, ammunition, explosives, copper, steel, aluminum, medicine, field radios, radar tools, books, and other items. The U.S. even transported an entire Ford Company tire factory, which made tires for military vehicles to the Soviet Union. From 1941 to 1945, the U.S. sent $11.3 billion, or $180 billion in 2016, in goods and services to the Soviets. So, the American leaders, for their part, were well satisfied that the Lend-Lease program helped achieve their objective, the defeat of Hitler. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.